is this plugin a prank? <sighs> I don't know how that sounds like blinding lights. Quincy Jones, you've been fooled, man. You just, <laughs> he could have done this. If there's one thing I know about this company, they are not into scrutiny and honest criticism from people. So please, I would really appreciate it if you take time to interact with this video, share it with others, and just help boost it to make sure that it gets out to as many people before I believe the ine inevitable like takedown process. And I have to start battling this. And I wanna be clear that everything in here is my personal opinion. This is my experience, my perception of the value of this plugin, how it's presented, and how it actually fulfills those promises, in my opinion only. People are allowed to like it but people should also be allowed to dislike it and be okay with that. That's what this is about. With that being said, I'm gonna talk about a few things today. The first thing is I'm actually going to generate grooves with this and we're gonna discuss, are they any good? Are they usable? Like it says 93% of the time. Then I'm gonna go through a multi-tiered rating process from ease of learning curve to practical usability to are they fulfilling their promises? And ultimately, do I think it's worth the price? No, no is the answer to that, but we're gonna talk about why. Then I wanna really unpack some of what I think are misleading marketing practices. I'm trying to be gentle with the words I use because I would use much worse critical things. But again, I'm trying to frolic my way through this to make sure this video stays up. And not to mention the littered amount of reviews from people who have affiliate links who are not disclosing their marketing relationship with the company and misleading people into liking the, pro the product. We're gonna talk all about that too because I have some choice thoughts and things that people don't know when it comes to YouTube reviews. It's really toxic and I hate this part of the industry. So we're gonna unpack that. And lastly, I'm gonna talk to you about a couple of alternates that I think are really great. And just because I am so not a fan of this plugin, I thought, well, as a drummer of 16 years and a producer of 10 years, I can just make some drum grooves myself with my own MIDI, not using any of their MIDI that, you know, they, they spent a million dollars coming up with these patterns for and give that to you for free. So there is a link down below to download dozens of grooves that I have personally used in my productions and you can have for yourself. Now, am I saying that it's the same as the drum loop of Nirvana, which what does that even mean? No, it's actually stuff that I've actively used in my projects, being out in the world, traveling around, making music. I wanna offer that to you at completely no cost. The link for that is down in the description. So to follow their process completely and to give them the best shot of me saying something favorable, I'm only gonna stick to the genres that I'm familiar with. I accidentally clicked the house version. I don't really do house music, so I can't judge the quality of it, but I can definitely judge the quality of some other stuff here. So let's go ahead and first take a listen to their pop. We're gonna do a handful in this genre. Let's go ahead and take a listen. Have the monkey throw something. Okay, that was the first sound. I would give that about a 0.5 out of 10. N no, it, it, okay, just to clarify, the promise is it's actually good 93% of the time. We haven't won so far. I'm gonna just hit the button again. I don't know how that sounds like blinding lights and how that's gonna instantly make the song better, but okay, two or three more. Okay, this sounds, I, I'm sorry. I, I, okay, I when I downloaded this, I didn't, I only loaded two things and I realized how much I disliked the plugin personally. I didn't like the sounds at all. This sounds like stock sounds from a DAW. Is this? I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not sorry. Who am I kidding? Okay, come on. I have yet to feel any of these are usable. Five. Somebody comment below, what pop song are we using that in? I feel like this is a really reductive attempt at trying to do like Latin inspired grooves, but doing it poorly. <laughs> All right, now let's just let's just get out of this. We're gonna try R&B. Let's take a listen. I'm gonna do it at a different tempo. Let's do it at 80 BPM. Oh no. Okay. 
I don't know if this is like a prank. Like, is is this plugin a prank? <sighs> okay. I, I there's zero. I don't even want to click. We'll do rocket metal last. All right. So here's synth wave and synth pop. Oh, I mean, I'm not even going to get into using. It's supposed to be one click, and the grooves are usable 93% of the time. So we shouldn't need to modify this. I should be inspired, think that it's amazing, and then make changes to that. Okay, and also, again, let's change. we're going to even change the tempo because let's go to 130. There it is. That's 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 blinding lights. That's beat it by Michael Jackson. Quincy Jones, you've been fooled, man. You just <laughs> he could have done this. Okay, we're gonna just try one more section. Um, Ninety-three percent. No. Let's try a rock and metal because that's gonna go. It's gonna go banger, bangerly. Let's try 110. Just trying to stick in like common, mid-tempo BPM for something like this. Oh, I hope this is a prank. It's gotta be a prank. No. Why is the free thing that I'm just gonna give people who go in the description infinitely more practical than this. I don't understand. I, 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 and if somebody from this company is still watching, I would I would truly love to have a conversation about this because I hope I hope there's something that went wrong in development because I don't understand how this is usable. Give this to any rock or metal producer and you'll be laughed out of the room. Like I'm just being honest. If I gave this to even me, I don't really produce a ton of metal. Okay, so the official score for usability is negative four out of 10. I don't understand at all the premise. This, the unfortunate part is a lot of times these companies do the whole like unclick and your infinite inspiration. I feel infinitely inspired to close the plugin. Like that's is my honest response is that I just don't understand. I don't get it, I don't get it. I will give it one thing, it's done a good job at creating you're just putting everything in a nice place visually, but there's nothing new about having a sampler. Like this is FL Studio. They took FL Studio, made it more expensive. <laughs> this is what Austin Hole, when him and I were talking about this, he's like, yeah, it's FL Studio, but more expensive and in a plugin and it's less capable than FL Studio. And it's like, yeah, like cool, I can put in my own samples, but the point was infinite inspiration and now I have to rebuild the samples and rebuild the groove. Why did I just not make my own drums here? You know, I, I do like the interface. I think it looks clean. I think it's nifty. I learned it in two seconds. It makes a lot of sense. Big button, hit it, new groove. That's rock and metal. That's the sound of rock and metal. I don't get it. All right, my cat knocked over one of the lights, but we're not gonna worry about it. So ultimately, as I'm trying to use this tool, when I say that it's worth the $300 price tag, absolute zero out of 10. This is to me incredibly unusable as somebody who's looking for modern sounds and based on the marketing, which is the next part we're gonna get to. And to me, the most kind of gross and icky part that I wanna walk you through of this entire plugin is how they present it to people as a solution. And we can compare it now to what we just heard and see if these line up. Now, before we unpack this, I wanna say I'm not against doing sponsored content. I'm not against marketing. I have two businesses that I run. I am a business, pro-business, pro-market overall kind of a person. But where it falls apart for me is when the promise and the fulfillment of that promise aren't meeting. That is what I feel personally, my personal opinion of the delta going on between the marketing of this product compared to the actual practical usability as somebody who I am on the floor using drums, building drums every single day, working on songs, sending them out to artists, getting their feedback and actually using drum samples, building grooves all the time. And when they cross in that line of 
promising the world, promising that it does this. And then we have what sounds like stock drum sounds from 2010 and just a chossed up FL Studio interface. It is not a $300 product to me. So I wanted to look through the landing page and actually look at how are they promising things and did they fulfill the promise? Because it falls apart a lot for me here. Now, there is the whole thing of the fake scarcity of uh, 3,500 licenses is all we're going to give out. We can't verify if they're not doing that or if they are, so we have to give them the benefit of the doubt. I don't want to call them out on something that I can't say, this is not working and here's why. So we're going to put that aside. Some people are also going to get really, you know, kind of jacked up about the whole like, oh, the bar here, it's like pressuring you and you can see that people are buying it and it builds it up. Like, yeah, that's that's fine. I mean, but that's not unethical. I don't think that's bad. I want to get to the actual, what I think is really misleading, dangerous stuff here. So the new way to produce addictive tracks in 30 genres and get infinite inspiration. Is this the beginning of an addictive track? Is it? I didn't hear a single thing that I would have said is the beginning of an addictive track. This is my experience, my experience only. I did not hear that. And I did not find infinite inspiration in doing so. So I just don't think that their headline actually fulfills the promise. Perfect unlimited drum loops. Again, I don't know who's rating that. Those is perfect and unlimited. Uh, create addictive tracks by generating proven professional quality drum loops. Uh, again, the, the issue is that the marketing lingo, the, the words that they use are that I'm unlocking the power of so much unique knowledge and insight. That's the dishonest part for me. It's not the fact that they say, hey, here's some drum loops, try them out. It's like we are giving you proven professional quality drum loops. And, and do I need to remind you what? This is the sound of proven rock and metal drum loops. This is the sound of proven unlimited perfection professional. This is not a, this is not the quality of the product that is being advertised here in the actual copy. So that's why I'm being critical here. And this gets into the principles that really frustrate me is a lot of what I consider lowbrow marketing or marketing that panders to really beginner people who aren't familiar with this style kind of is like a, you get them once kind of a thing is they have to communicate their product as something that will unlock potential you can never achieve on your own. So that's why they have to use overdone, just nonsensical copy is that they have to position this redone FL Studio sampler with sounds that would be better if you just got Oliver's pack or anything from Make Pop Music packs and try to make it seem like something different. So right now, the kind of the hot trendy thing is to be like, AI is involved. You're too stupid to, you're stupid. You need a computer who's smarter than your stupid brain, like to, to do it. And, and that's just not, sensical like you could just learn a couple of things about drums and, and be fine <laughs> you probably seem to pick a better snare <laughs> to help a lot more gain an unfair competitive advantage you know you can finally get the plays that you deserve and this is a very common click funnels like i blame russell brunson you know that that whole section for this you, you know so you can finally get the plays you deserve they're tying the sounds that we heard the drum grooves you heard or what is the difference between your songs getting plays or not? So they have to tie it to something that creates a bigger uh, insight, like a bigger, uh, what not just the feature, but what's the benefit and the meaning? This is copy language here. The feature is you, you have these uh, loops and all this stuff, but the meaning is you finally get the plays you deserve. And it hits on the pain point of artists who don't get a lot of plays, which most don't because there's so much volume and our artists are innately not marketers. And so they're tying their product as the way to get you the plays that you think you've been deserving. So they're also hitting on the, the premise of allowing you to let go of guilt. You don't need to be, feel guilty like it's your fault that you don't have the plays you deserve. It's actually because you can't create addictive unlimited drum inspiration with the power beyond human limits of groove. You need AI generated magical brains to, to get you there. It's not your fault your song doesn't have plays it's because your drums aren't there. And once you believe that, then all of this becomes really easy. Oh, and also keep in mind, actually sounds good 93% of the time. There we go, I wanted to make sure to show that. Um, 
And then they just kind of regurgitate everything here and make your tracks addictive. But here's a couple of choice things I wanted to point out that were just really kind of gross to me. So so the first thing was this part. Drum loops are the foundation for any hit song. I'm not going to disagree with that. I mean, I'm a drummer, so I have an inflated ego around drums. Uh, the way Billboard, that's why Billboard number one songs like Blinding Lights, Mood by 24 Karat Golden, or Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana. They, it's, it's because they have drum loops that hook you in. Now keep in mind, Smells Like Teen Spirit starts with guitar, but the reason that people like Smells Like Teen Spirit is because of the drums. The first four bars, people hate Smells Like Teen Spirit. It's one of the worst, boring, most cumbersome turd songs I've ever heard. It's the drums. And not to, okay, I'm gonna harp on this just like a little bit more because again, it's have, you know, drum loops are the foundation for any hit song. That's why Billboard number one songs like XYZ have drum loops that hook you in and make you wanna listen on repeat. So it's again implying this is the marketing stuff. They have to convince you that the only block between your current state and your future state is drums. And if they can convince you that your drum programming is the only reason you aren't succeeding right now, but it's why all the pros are succeeding, then conveniently they can then show you their product and how it fulfills that need. Now, it's really frustrating when they say that the drums are the only reason. It couldn't be the writing, it couldn't be the performances, it couldn't be the engineering, it couldn't be the mix, it couldn't be the marketing, it couldn't be all these other factors. It has nothing to do with all of that. It's just about the drums. That's why. But I wonder, how could you attain the power of addictive drums beyond the comprehension of any human being? Funny. So, you know, and then they kind of go into unlimited possibilities. I mean, there technically is unlimited possibilities. It's not possibilities I'm interested in. Make your tracks addictive in order to professional quality. And then again, right, they say things that are true, but it's not really that relevant. You know, in order for your drum loops to be professional quality, they need to use the right elements, the right samples, be relatable and have hard hitting power. I'm not sure what an unrelatable sample would be just just unsure what that means. And now we're gonna wonder if my cat is actually gonna, there he is, hello babes. Okay, hold on. <laughs> so again, it's just like that, I don't know what, you know, relatable means, but they are correct. They're saying things that are true. You're, you do have to use the right elements which is the same as the right samples, um, understand like things about drum arrangement. And then they're just kind of regurgitating the same words all over. Proven patterns from hit songs. I, I do have one question though. What is the proven pattern? Could I, I would just like to know which, how was this pattern proven to be it? How was this pattern? What was the work that went into proving that? Because I'm just not sure what that is right now. Maybe I'm incorrect. I'd like to hope I am, but I don't think I am. Infinite and Beer talked about that. Finish your music in record time. Right now, this is where they're starting to future pace the benefit of their product. So if you want to achieve any level of success as a producer, um, that's because when you're finishing music, you won't be able to master the entire production process or actually get the music out to the world. With Drum Monkey, you'll have the ability to generate the groundwork for your songs in seconds to maximize your output, which is true. If this tool actually did what it promises, which was 93% of the time create usable, usable grooves, then actually this would do that exactly. Now, I'm gonna argue that the MIDI files that you can download for free in the description do the, a much better job of that than what I've heard out of this plugin. I mean, I, some part of me is hoping that like I got the weirdest install and I got all the wrong sounds, but that seems very unlikely. Even then, the actual grooves themselves, I'm not sure what proven hit songs these are from. One of my least favorite things that marketers will also do is take a statistic that is irrelevant and then use it to cause fear. So for example, something that I hate when people say is like, oh, 40,000, 50,000 songs go up on Spotify a day, so you gotta learn to cut through the noise. It's like, well, that doesn't really affect me. Th that number is largely irrelevant because I don't play every genre, I'm not for everybody, I don't wanna appeal to everybody. Like, that's a number that's way bigger. Same thing with this DAW thing. And with 305,000 people downloading a DAW, like, am I really competing with people who do podcasts, people who do uh, audio for film and TV, people who do hip hop? I'm primarily a pop person. And am I competing with the person who just downloaded it, people who do different subgenres of pop? And it's, is it even competition? Because I have my own flair. But again, they have to make it seem like you are in a battle of 305,000 new people every single day. You're battling 
a million people every three days and you need every leg up you can. You know how you can get that leg up? With our repackaged FL Studio beat generator. Like, like that's, that's the degree of how they have to convince you that you are in a place of peril and you're, you're surrounded by fire. Gain your massive competitive edge, your insane output, and then get the music the attention it deserves, right? Then they're going back to that whole like, oh, if you use uh, these, these grooves, these grooves, you're gonna get way more listens to your music. Take your old songs, swap out the beats you had before and put in these beats. And now you have achieved ultimate fame. Like that's how they're positioning it. They're very clever into not guaranteeing it, of course, but that's how they're say, it's almost like implying it. Like I can't guarantee that this is gonna happen, but like, here's what could happen. And then the way we internalize that is that it's a certainty. And again, we're faced with things that don't sound to be honest from my, this is my opinion of what they're saying. I can't prove that it's dishonest. I'm gonna leave that up to you as you're, if you're watching this. To make it, we obsessively analyze successful songs in 30 genres. Keep in mind, they obsessively analyzed 30 genres. And this was the pop group they came up with. I'll leave that up to you. Is that usable? Is this? Is that, is that, is that usable? Do, do, uh, I'm gonna leave that up to you. And so then they're going through this whole like, oh, we really care, we went through this process, which it, I, I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt that they did. I can't prove otherwise. I'm, that I'm gonna say that this is all true, uh, but there are some things that do seem suspicious to me when they say the 5,500 hours and a million dollars of development. So keep in mind, if, if they said a million dollars of development, but they're only doing 3,500 licenses times 297, which is, a million dollars. So just between development cost and the limiting of the plugin is break even just to develop it, just just to develop the technology. It's not talking about the coding to make it a plugin, all the different versions. I mean, maybe it is, but it's not talking about the marketing expenses, none of this. So according to their math, they'd be taking a substantial loss to do all the marketing and then only bring in a million in revenue because any penny spent to develop it would essentially be lost compared to the million that they're gonna make right now. Of course, you could justify saying that, yeah, it's a long-term investment, but uh, I'm not really sure. I, I just, I don't know, it doesn't, based on hearing a lot of the examples, I don't know if this took a million dollars of development. I would love to be proven wrong. That's my opinion. Um, they're saying they are, so I, I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt. We've done all the hard work for you. All you have to do is press the button. This is their promise to you. All you have to do is press the button. And then we have some scarcity that is not needing to be there. It's just saying they're limiting the amount of licenses. I feel like my opinion is that they went to a conference. Somebody's like, I found a way to like create scarcity for digital products, say this, and and we can't really check if it is or not. Um, but you know, maybe it is, maybe I'm wrong, I could be wrong. We have one more thing and I want you to stick around. It's time to talk about the toxic world of dishonest affiliate marketing. Now I'm gonna show some YouTuber thumbnails and titles here. This is not intentionally about them. I more consider the problem to be the system, not the people implementing it. It's just purely to show as an example what is going on. So, I mean, no hate to whoever I end up clicking on. I kind of sorted through a few of them. It is just what it is. So in order to create the perception that your product is great, there's a few things you need to cover before you can get to the affiliates. The first thing is we need social proof that it's good. And we can see on a lot of, obviously we have like screenshot testimonials, but the biggest thing is to have people who the community trusts who the public trusts and then get their perspective and have them say nice things about your plugin because you are going to trust your favorite youtuber hi you know i'm not your probably not your favorite youtuber boom roasted to myself more than you're going to trust me more than you would trust like an ad with somebody saying hi my name's jim this plugin is good and affiliate Partnerships are a great way to do that. You can do it ethically because there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, I was paid to look through this plugin. I'm gonna just click through it, show you how I would use it, give you some of my thoughts, and then we're go. But the important distinction is that there's a disclosure that there's a financial incentive here form. for this exchange. And that's where I start to have an issue because I can tell right here, again, no hate to Firewalk. I don't want this to be about 
any of the specific YouTubers. I don't blame YouTubers for getting the bag. It's the system that's set up that kind of incentivizes this behavior. This is clearly a an affiliate link right here, right? It's Unison and then Firewalk, and then another one over here. That's Unison slash Firewalk, and this is Unison slash Fizo, I'm gonna guess. So Firewalk had his, and then we can see here, we, you know, Fizo has his. So these are all clearly affiliate links, which means that they get a kickback. So the two issues that I have with this is one, they don't disclose that at all. The YouTuber Sweet Scale TV did disclose that lightly. He's like, I've worked with Sep before, so I was excited to see what he had in stores. Lightly implied, but the nature of the fact that we click that plugin and they get paid and they are now incentivized to drive traffic to that link is not disclosed. My understanding of it is that that is illegal. That is illegal advertising. I've seen other people get in big trouble for it, for not disclosing ads and the nature of relationships. Now. I don't know if this is in this case, I'm just saying what I've observed in the past. So that's the, my first biggest thing. And my second biggest thing is now all the copy and the, the way that people talk about the plugin sounds like the sales page. Like it sounds so fake. It sounds so dishonest. Um, I'll bring in a plugin like quickly generate unique sounding drum loops in seconds. The fact that more than 3000 percussion samples are truly impossible. The combination also import your own Like it just, it is regurgitated sales page. And again, Get your bag, please get your bag. <laughs> I totally get that. I'm really glad that you're catching a bag because I catch no dollars directly off my YouTube content. So awesome, good for you. But now you're using your fans in your community to push people to a product and you aren't incentivized to actually give an honest conversation about it. So with this relationship now, you want to say these things. And if you look through these videos, a lot of it, is just portions of the sales copy. It's crazy to have something that gives you infinite inspiration and it works almost every single time really well and you can create any kind of, like it's just the sales page. It's just the sales page. But now it's a video and it becomes that much more powerful to the consumer who trusts you to give their your opinion, your being a YouTuber, the influencer's opinion on a product. So now when my buddy, my buddy, you know, parasocial relationship buddy that I've trusted for years is pushing a plugin and pushing a product, I'm gonna, trust the company so much more than if it was just a billboard, you know, a digital billboard and ad that I saw on the side of the road. So that's my issue. And then the last most nefarious part of this to me is that now if I actually want an honest review of this plugin, I am overwhelmed by all of the affiliates. So I can't even tell where is an actual honest, unfinancially motivated review of this software. Because I have a feeling nobody really wants to pay three hundred dollars for this, so you, any employee that this is definitely an affiliate. Yep. And how far do I have to scroll down to just get a review of this plugin? Yep. Nope. There it is. There's the affiliate. That's not even about this. The best drum sequencer I've used. Yep. Everything is an affiliate. So now there's not an honest freaking review out there. There is not a purely unencumbered by financial incentive review of this software. The only thing that exists are people, the screenshots that they took from their Facebook community of their pre-existing fans talking about their new product who are the most likely to say positive things. But if I wanna actually see a producer try to use it in a song, well, first off, it's unusable. But <laughs> that's my, my opinion that it's unusable. But second off, I can't even get through. I, where does it end? And let's face it, I'm not going to spend my life scrolling down here, but they have dominated. So now every single person who wants a review of the plugin goes, watches their in, watches people discuss it, use it in context. They're unaware of the financial incentive that this creator has been given to push a product. And then they are told things from the sales page coming out of somebody's mouth. Because in the same way, would you trust insert your favorite YouTuber saying a product is good, or would you trust somebody you don't know? You're gonna trust the influencer more, and that is where this gets really gross feeling for me. It's just very, ugh. This is the other thing. I do sponsorships. I do sponsored content. I work with companies. I disclose it, but the difference for at least my position, even though I am a small creator on the platform, is that my income isn't dependent upon me saying yes to affiliate deals, to sponsored content. I get to say yes when I want to, because as a music producer, I work off of the platform. My time here on the platform, this video is gonna make me less money for the time I'm spending for my editor, for my assistant to help get everything out than anything else I could do with my time. But I'm here doing it 
because I believe in this stuff. I'm only taking a partnership when I love the product and I'm in that position because I don't depend on monetizing you to pay my bills. Whereas when you are in that position, you sometimes end up being potentially in that space. So my final verdict, unsurprisingly, is a hard no thank you. I will be leveraging the 60 day money back guarantee, no questions asked, no hard feelings, and seeing if they stay true to that. If they don't, I will be making a lot of content about it for them not practicing what they preach. So two quick things before you go. Thank you for sticking with, three quick things. One, thank you for sticking with me through this. Again, please boost this up because this is going to get heavily targeted. Well, I'm sure they don't want this being out. I'm literally fighting a wall of affiliate BS reviews right now to try to actually discuss what the merits of this plugin are without an incentive to say good things about it. So I wouldn't be surprised if I need some help with that. So second thing, please don't buy this. If you want help with your grooves, get the free giveaway in the link below of popular MIDI grooves made by a pop producer who is actively creating grooves because guess what? You don't need AI to tell you that your hi-hats should probably be eighth notes at least to start or that maybe here's some basic clave patterns for percussion elements and that you probably want to kick drum on beat one most of the time and then some variations around that. So I got your back there to splice, make pop music samples, Make pop music sound aren't on Splice, but a great platform. Austin is an incredible creator, producer, business owner. That's where you should go if you want fresh as crap sounds. Fresh as crap, fresh as uh, fresh fruit sounds. And his hair is fresh. He has fresh hair as well. And lastly, I'm gonna just because I think it, it it's it's funny this way. I'm gonna give away a 30 minute drum groove building lesson to somebody who comments down below. So if you make it to the end of the video and you heard heard this right now. Make sure to comment and say yee yee at the end of your comment and you'll be entered in to, to win. And if I pick you, I'll DM you on Instagram or just try to, I'll find out how to get a hold of you and give you a 30 minute lesson on building grooves. And it will be incredibly valuable compared to what this plugin is offering. But I just want to do that because I, because I can and I think it'd be great. So that is it for today. Thank you guys again so much. If you enjoy this kind of content, I don't do these kind of critical videos very often, but I really feel the need to speak up when I need to speak up for the community. I My mantra is kindness wins. Now it's very critical, but I talk about kindness wins for the consumer and for you. That's why, that's what kindness is about, is I need to, the kindness of my heart is telling me I cannot let a single person buy this plugin. I think it is the least, my least favorite plugin I think I may have personally ever used. I would have to take some time, but that's how I feel and that's why I don't want anybody else to, to, to go and make an investment like this. So that's my honest, 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 honest perspective. Hope you have a great rest of your day and get out there, work hard, and remember, you're just one song away.